Hi there, since you clicked on this video, you're probably wondering, is NVIDIA's share price really worth it? So today I'm going to walk you through the discounted cash flow model, which is one of the most used model for company valuations. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Venus. I've been working tech for the past eight years and I did my MBA focused in finance from Duke. So I want to give you a point of view from a person who worked in tech and also have a finance education background. So with Without further ado, let's jump right into it. So here, as you can see that I made multiple different assumptions with also three types of different modeling method. So let's go over the DCF first, and then I will talk you through the Graham's valuation model, which is from this uh, very famous book, The Intelligent uh, Investor, which Buffett said right here, by far the best book on investing ever. So we'll talk through that. And last thing, we'll talk through the multiple which is one of the easiest value valuation model out of all the three. And it's very easy, very simple to understand. So let's jump right into the DCF first. So here is the model that I built for NVIDIA. I will not because of the time and I won't bore you with all the details of the calculation, but I will talk you through the logic and what are the assumptions I made behind this. So all this data I put from is income statement, its balance sheet, and its um, cash flow statement. So you can find all these data public. So I pulled all the way back from 1999. If you look back then, NVIDIA was a tiny company. Why didn't we invest back then, right? So um, so this is the latest 2024 financial, which they just announced today. And their revenue has grew over 100% in the past year. So one of the assumptions I made here is assuming that NVIDIA continue to grow in a very high growth rate uh, for the next uh, at least three five, to five years. So that's something I think is possible. If the economy and everything works as as we all expected. And from the earnings call, James Huang also mentioned that right now they're working with 50,000 of business who are running the LOM model on their chips, and which I think that's a, one of the greatest opportunities right there. I think this market growth opportunities is actually there. And next assumption I made uh, is, is gross profit. And this is basically carrying over NVIDIA's current rate of its growth margin but over time i think that will decline okay when given how much competition is out there from amd and a lot of companies are also developing their own chips uh, like meta and a couple of other big companies and the next way goes to operating income so for this one i just assume this will be 50 percent of its revenue for the first couple of years very similar to the last one we talked about just assuming the current as the current run rate and slowly gradually go down. And for the tax rate, basically I just took the same tax rate and I expect this number might, still, might continue to go up. So once we got that, and then you can calculate the earning before interest after tax. So that's one of the number we'll need for the next calculation. And then we move on to the items that we will need for our cash flow calculation. So you can grab the depreciation and amortization number from the uh, cash flow statement, and which I grabbed from here. And then we calculate it as a percentage of its revenue and made some assumption for the future years. And same goes for the capex and then working cash flow. So once you got all that down and then you can calculate your free, uh, your unlevered free cash flow, which is basically your earning before interest after tax, then add back your depreciation and amortization and then subtract your capital expenditure and then subtract your changes in net working capital. So once you got that, this is your unlevered free cash flow. So we got these all the way through the year of uh, 2035. And now we will need to do one thing is to discount that back to its current value. For, for doing that, we will need a WAC, which is with the average cost of capital. So basically meaning that 
how much Nvidia earned as one dollar in the year of 2035 and how much is worth of today's dollar we'll have to discount that back so here is a whack and we will uh, grab some numbers here so percentage of his equity is basically using his current market cap that's so crazy it's almost a two trillion dollar market cap and then plus is that and calculate the percentage of equity and then for calculating the cost of equity, which is what we need here, uh, you need the risk-free rate and basically it's your 20 years treasury T-bill and I grabbed it right here. And then you will need a beta risk factor looks like for NVIDIA. So I grabbed that number right here. And then you will have to have a market risk premium, which is uh, I'm using the 2023 number, 5.7. So once you got all that down and we got our cost of equity, so basically meaning that if you put so much money in NVIDIA, what's the expected return from the shareholders? And now uh, you can calculate your WAC, which is basically using your um, percentage of equity times the cost of equity and plus um, percentage of debt and multiply by the cost of debt. Cost of debt, I didn't find the exact number, but just to, to be super simple, I use 5% for now. So once you got the WAC down, which is 14%, which is pretty high, by the way, um, and you use that to discount the cash flow. And now we will need to do something called the terminal value, and this is basically assuming that past the year of 2035 and nvidia will gonna continue steadily growing but at a lower rate which is three percent uh, terminal growth rates that's what i'm using which is very typical for a certain company once it's becoming growing into a more established state so once we got that you will get a terminal value from that calculation so you basically have to discount this one back as well well we sum up everything from the present value of free cash flow and also the present value of the terminal value and that you can get something called enterprise value minus the debt is currently carrying and plus cash and cash equivalents and then you will get the equity value from this calculation and discounted share counts you can easily find that on the any of the public information and use the equity value divided by the discounted share count and you will get to nvidia's implied share price from this valuation model so let's just quickly recap here the key assumptions we made are NVIDIA is going to continue to grow at 100% growth rate, 50% growth rate on year four or five, and continues to grow in a high rate. And profit margin wise, it will continue to be staying within 60 to 70% range. Its operating income is always going to be staying anywhere within this assumption range. So if every single criteria is met and this is implied the share price you will get for nvidia so let's just pause here for a quick second we made some assumptions that i think that's fairly aggressive imagine next year and nvidia didn't hit that 100 percent but it hits 80 percent and for the following year nvidia hit another 80 percent and etc cetera, etc cetera. it's implied the share price will actually be 592 dollars so it's really depending on the future growth of the company but on the positive side i also made a high valuation case which here that assuming nvidia will continue to grow at 125 percent growth rate uh, which is the exact same growth rate as of right now for the next three years and the implied share value will become $1,200. Right now you probably have some good idea of what are the assumptions we made and when you're buying a share of NVIDIA at this current price what does it actually mean to you? So next let's move on to the Graham's valuation model it's actually pretty interesting. So this is uh, Graham's its original uh, formula. I believe it's in this book, 
chapter from this book this book from chapter 10 to chapter 15 it talks in depth about its valuation method and how you read through the income statements and financial statements so um so but this model is a little bit out of outdated and so right now this is what everybody agrees will be more adjusted to today's valuation um, situation because back then this book was I don't even know how many years old this is a really old book the publication was 1949 so imagine um, trying to use valuation model from 70 years ago so this is an adjusted version which will be closer to the current situation so this is basically you use it looks a little bit complicated but it's actually not is um, um, assuming a company there's no growth and its PE ratio which is price um, earning ratio is seven and then you plus the um, you plus a growth rate of the company you are evaluating you are evaluating at which is Nvidia and we use 100% for its growth rate and then use that times uh, the average yield of corporate bond which right now is 4.4 percent and divided by by the current yield on the triple a corporate bonds so that's how you get to this valuation which in my opinion is pretty aggressive and if i were to use this um model i would put a 35 percent um safety margin of safety so so for me $800 based on my DCF this is still pretty high now let's look at something else uh, multiples I took a couple of the tech companies here the big tech and also other semiconductors so AMD uh, Intel for example ASML which is not that quite close but uh, I think an average of these three is an interesting point to use. So NVIDIA's PE right now is right at 100, but if NVIDIA's PE becomes 164, the implied share price will become $1,200. So just a really depending on the market and how much PE ratio the market is willing to give. Um, if you compare to other chip semiconductor company which are uh, having a pretty low PE, uh, Nvidia share value will drop significantly because of the low PE ratio. So this is just for a reference. Keep um, back in your pocket. In my opinion, 100 PE is already very very high. Uh, I personally wouldn't adjust that to 164. But what we learned so far, NVIDIA's current share price is very aggressively priced in 100% growth rate for the next three years and also high growth continuously for the next decade, basically. So if ever NVIDIA's growth rate dropped to 80%, let's say, NVIDIA's implied share price will be anywhere between five to $600. So this is really based on your individual uh, risk tolerance and how you see Nvidia's future and so leave a comment down below on your point of view and again before you make any financial decision please make sure to do your own research or consult a uh, financial advisor if you have one so thank you so much for watching and if you like this video make sure you comment and share i will leave a free copy of this valuation model for you to download in the description box down below feel free to grab a copy before you go and i'll hopefully see you next time